ceramic student. Today we're going to talk about throwing on the potter's wheel. So let's talk about preparation first. Before you sit down, you want to make sure that you have all the materials and supplies that you need to be successful. So let's talk about tools. I want to use my wooden rib, so get that from your kit. I want to have a sponge. I want to have my wooden shaping tool. And then you're also going to use your needle tool. Now my needle tool is wood, so it's going to float in the bucket, but yours has a metal handle. So you're going to have to stick yours in your clay, just like that. Now I have a bucket right here and it's about halfway full with warm water. I like warm water because it's not going to be as shocking to my hands because I'm going to have to stick my hands in the water over and over. And I'm just going to drop all these tools in the bucket so I can find them. The next thing that I have is a rag and that's just going to be useful for wiping my hands. If you don't have a rag, it's not a huge deal. Then I actually have a wear board whoops, for my piece after I'm finished. I have these pot lifts and I went ahead and decided that my piece was going to be small. So I picked up the small pot lifts and you're going to use those like this to pick up your pottery off the wheel. And then I have a ball of clay. I'm going to fix that spot. I just messed up, but I have already wedged actually three balls of clay. If you have at least two, you'll have enough. Um, but I want to wedge up extra clay just in case I destroy or mess up my first piece. So over here I have two more balls of clay wedged up and ready to go. That way if I mess up, instead of having to get up and kind of break my flow, I can just grab another ball of clay and keep going. All right, the next thing I want to talk to you about is the potter's wheel. So we have electric wheels at Hernando High School, um, and those are pretty nice. So it's plugged into the wall. Check that first. Then I want to make sure that this right here the splash guard is secure so I want to make sure like these two pieces are together after I'm finished I can take the two pieces apart take these to the sink and rinse them out so the rule here is you always want to leave something cleaner than the way that you found it so if everything's cleaned and wiped down when you get here you want it to be clean and wiped down when you leave all right the next thing I'm going to do is switch the wheel on so I want to look down on the side find the switch and make sure it lights up, that lets you know it's on. Then I'm gonna adjust the foot pedal. It's just a pedal that is on a cord. So depending on your height, you can move the pedal wherever it feels comfortable. So since I'm pretty tall, I'm gonna move the pedal forward and move my chair back. I want my body to be as close to the wheel as possible though, so I don't wanna to have to move too far back. I would rather just move the pedal forward and um, I also want to make sure that my hips are higher than the wheel. So if you're a little bit short or if you're extremely thin, um, you might end up wanting to sit on a book so that your hips are higher than the wheel head. All right, the pedal for the wheel actually works just like a car pedal. So if I push down and forward, that is go. And you want to make sure that you can easily move the pedal because sometimes it gets jammed up with clay. All right, the next thing I'm going to talk about is the wheel head itself. So the nice thing about the wheel head is that it actually has concentric circles so that you can see whether or not your piece is centered. And centering is the most important thing about throwing. So you always want to make sure that you center your clay first. Don't skimp on that step and don't try to rush ahead to the next thing. Um, so I'm actually going to try to make sure that my clay is inside that center circle on the wheel head. That is why we do not throw with bats. When you're inexperienced, sometimes the bat pins, you don't see them and they hit you while you're throwing and that feels very uncomfortable. It's like hitting your funny bone. So um, here um, we just don't use bats um, in Ceramics 1 and there aren't any bat pins on the wheel head. Um, but like I like to say, there are many ways to skin a cat. So if you watch a video of a different potter and they're using um, bats or if they're, you know, using a slightly different technique to start, that is okay. Um, but when I'm coaching you, this is what I'm going to have you do. All right. So 
let's go through the steps of getting started. So I took my sponge, squeezed it out. I'm just making the wheel head a little bit damp. And then I'm going to take my needle tool out and just throw the pretty side of my clay down at the wheel. And I want to throw it hard enough that it spreads out and it sticks. And I want to make sure that it's really sealed and secure. And if I'm worried about that seal, I can actually just take my finger and press that seal into the wheel so that the clay's really, really stuck down. I don't want my clay flying off while I'm trying to center. All right, another thing is if you throw it off center because you are not used to throwing balls of clay, um, that is totally fine. You can actually just push it really hard and scoot it closer to the center of the wheel and then seal it and tap it to make sure that it's really secure. All right, now when you start throwing, trust me on this, you want the wheel on full speed. So you're going to press the pedal down as far as it could go. And then, especially since y'all are inexperienced drivers and potters, take your foot off of the pedal and set it down on the floor. The next thing you want to do is wet your hands. You always want there to be uh, a layer of water between you and the clay so that there's no friction. Friction is bad. It's going to cause you to pull your clay off center. So I just wet my clay, I wet my hands, like my hands already have slip on them, and then I'm going to center my clay. So the first thing I want to do is look at my clay, see where it is, and I can see it, and I can see kind of an unevenness. So even just that little bit, you can see it on camera, that's not okay. We want our clay to be perfectly centered because it's only going to get slightly off center as I throw. So I don't want to start with it off center because then it's just going to get worse and probably collapse. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is think about my body. So I want to be sitting as close to the wheel as possible, and then I want my legs to be wrapped around the splash guard, and then I'm going to actually tuck my elbows in to my hips. And if I was a little bit thinner or shorter, I would have to really hunch over like this, and so that is okay. You still want your elbows to be tucked in at your hips that's going to be more steady and secure as the clay is moving you than if you have your hands out here and they're moving around a lot. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to feel the clay and I'm going to slowly lean in and squeeze and push. If I start to feel friction like I just did, I'm just going to get some more water and wet my hands and do it again and lean in and squeeze and push. And I want to make sure that I center the entire mass of clay. So I'm keeping those pinkies tucked in and rubbing on the wheel head. And even though it might feel slightly uncomfortable, I promise it will not cut you. And you want those to be tucked in so that the bottom of your clay is centered and it's not spreading out on the wheel head. And then I want to tighten and tense my upper arm muscles and focus on the sides of the clay. And then I actually want to press down my thumbs and push the clay out into my hands. And that's going to get that clay centered for me. Now, centering is something that I have been doing for several years. So it's going to take you longer than 30 seconds to center. It might even take you up to 10 minutes to center the first time. That is perfectly normal and okay. Do not get frustrated and do not give up. The next thing I want to do is actually smooth out this top edge. I don't like that it's got kind of like a hump. So I'm going to press with my fist and use my non-dominant hand to keep the clay in place. So I'm actually left-handed, which I know um, most people are right-handed. So my dominant hand is my left hand. So I'm going to be using my left hand to do most of the work. If you are right-handed, you're just going to do everything the opposite way. Um, Left-handed throwing is actually a little bit more difficult because I have the wheels spinning counterclockwise. Um, so left-handers, sorry, but um, I will struggle through that with you. Then the next thing I'm going to do is open up the clay. So I want to make sure that everything is nice and moist. So I'm wetting my hands, wetting the clay, and then I'm going to think about shooting a pull stick. So I'm going to take my non-dominant elbow, tuck that into my hip so it's braced and secure, and I'm going to take my non-dominant hand, open it up into a V-shape, and set that next to my clay. And that's there to kind of feel the clay to make sure it's not 
doing this, if my hand starts doing that on the clay, that's going to tell me that my clay is off centered and that I need to go back to step one and center my clay again. The next thing I'm going to do is take my longest finger, which is my middle finger, and kind of rest that over the V shape of my non dominant hand. And I'm using my left middle finger and just pressing into the clay a little bit. And if I start to feel my middle finger wiggle, that means that I'm off center and I need to pull out, recenter my clay, and start over. If everything is good, then I'm going to kind of pick up that finger and push down into the clay. Now, some people open up their clay with their thumbs. So if you see a video like that online, that is totally fine. That just does not work well for me. And I feel like it does not work well for most people, especially if you have smaller hands. Um, so that is why I open up clay the way that I do. All right, the next step is gonna be to widen the clay. So I'm gonna take my non-dominant hand and place it on the side of the clay so that I can feel it. And then I'm sticking that finger back in, but I'm actually kind of hooking my thumb on the hand that's just resting there to make sure that I am controlled and steady. My right elbow is still braced into my body. If you're right-handed, your left elbow would still be braced into your body. And then I'm slowly pulling out. And you want to use about as much pressure as a firm handshake to move that clay. And if you can see on camera, my clay is starting to wobble just a little bit, which means that I need to very carefully try to push my clay back to where it needs to be. Now, because I have a big hole in the middle of it, I can no longer go back to step one. So if you rush this step and open it really badly off center, you're just going to have a cup that is taller on one side and thicker on one side. And I have a feeling that this example cup, since I haven't thrown since February, is going to be a little bit like that. But that is okay. The nice thing about clay is it's just dirt, so if I make an ugly cup, it's not really the end of the world. I can just recycle it and make another one. All right, now that my clay is open and I've got about this much space on the inside, so I can easily fit all of my fingers inside of my cup, so I know it's wide enough. The next step is compressing, and this is a step that a lot of beginner potters skip, and it's a bad idea. If you forget to compress, your cup will do one of two things. It will either tear as you're pulling, it will overextend itself and collapse as you're pulling, so it won't ever make it completely through um, the process, or it will crack in the kiln. So you really, really, really want to make sure that you do this next step. So I'm going to take my sponge and squeeze out, so no extra moisture, and I'm going to press down in the center of my cup and kind of smooth the bottom and compress that clay. And I'm using my hand to kind of steady my sponge and then I'm going to pull out slowly. So you want to be slow and deliberate about your movement here. It's not actually like Instagram where they do it in 30 seconds. All those videos are sped up. Then I'm going to take my sponge and slowly just kind of press on the lip of my cup and make it nice and smooth. All right, the next step is going to be throwing. So this is what everyone thinks of when they think of throwing, but as you just saw, there's a whole lot that goes into it beforehand. When I get to this step, I can slow down the wheel. So before, I wanted the wheel to go as fast as possible because we're naturally off-center creatures. So for me to be able to center, first of all, I have to be calm. Second of all, I have to be focused. And third of all, the wheel needs to be go, going as fast as possible so that it is spinning as quickly as possible. Um, and I don't have to hold my hand steady as long because it's spinning past my hand so quickly. All right, at this point, it's really about how steady you can keep your hands um, and how much strength you have. You want to have just enough strength, not too much. So think of clay like a baby um, and, you know, be gentle with it. But at the same time, sometimes you have to be firm to move it. All right, so I've got my wheel about at half speed. So my foot is actually parallel with the ground right now. 
once I get it at the speed that I want, I'm going to take my foot off and I'm going to put it down on the ground. Now, as you get more experienced, you can actually throw with the wheel spinning a little bit faster than this, but right now, this is a good medium speed for you. All right, the next thing I want to think about is the shape of my cup. So if you look, and I'll turn off the wheel so you can see, my walls are not perfectly um, perpendicular, right? They're not straight up and down. Um, they are actually kind of like in a slight volcano kind of shape. Um, and that's intentional. The wheel has centrifugal force, so it's going to make my clay spread out and widen, especially as I start pushing on it. So I actually want to help myself out just a little bit by starting with the volcano shape and not turning it into that perfect cylinder until I get to the end of the process. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this non-dominant elbow bracing against my body. I'm going to pick this elbow up because this is the hand that I'm going to be able to move the most. And I'm going to put my hands at five o'clock. So you know, noon, six, five. Um, and so that's going to work for anyone because this way the clay is spinning away from my fingertips. If I moved over here to the opposite side, the clay is spinning into my fingertips. And all that's going to happen is I'm going to gouge my clay and rip a big hole in my cup. I don't want to do that. So I always want to make sure that I'm at five o'clock when the wheel is spinning counterclockwise. All right, the next step, which I was trying to skip ahead to, is to pull up on the clay. So I'm actually pushing in with my fingertips just a little bit. And I only want to touch the clay with my fingertips, not my whole fingers. And I'm actually putting pressure on both sides of the wall. And then I'm slowly pulling up. And you can see the clay slowly moving up. And I'm going to go all the way through the lip. So just like shooting a basketball, you don't pull your hand back as soon as you release the ball. You actually keep your hand in the air for a few seconds. And the same is true with your throwing. So you want to go all the way through the lip every single time you pull. And when you are a beginner, you want to take your time. So I'm going super slow. And I want to make sure that the wheel has enough time to spin a full rotation everywhere that my fingertips are touching. So it's really impossible to go too slow. Um, it is possible to not use enough pressure if you're not moving the clay at all, but it is not possible to move too slow. So you want to be intentional and slow. If I start to see that the little marks that my fingers are making in the clay look like a barbershop pole, that tells me that I'm moving up too fast. I want my lines to be as parallel to each other and as evenly spaced apart as possible. So I want all these beautiful little horizontal throwing lines all the way up and down my cup. Now what I'm focusing on as I throw is not the height of my cup. That will come naturally. What I want to focus on is the width of the wall between my fingertips. So usually what happens to me, and this is what happens to a lot of y'all, is that I have extra clay down at the bottom and I'm trying to move that up. And I really want to focus on trying to get a consistent wall. So I want to press a little bit harder where I feel extra clay. And then when I get to the part of the wall where it's perfect, I want to let off pressure and just kind of glide across the surface of the clay all the way through to the top. And can y'all see that wobble at the top of my pottery? That is because I didn't open it completely off center. So I will show you a trick to fix that at the end of the throwing. But that happens a lot, especially when you're A, out of practice like I am, or B, inexperienced like you are. So it's okay. Most things can be fixed in pottery. All right, can y'all hear that little noise? I think the motor is actually louder than that noise, but what that is is an air pocket. So what that tells me is I either put a hole in my clay when I stuck my needle tool in it and I didn't open up that area like I thought I would, or I didn't wedge my clay well enough. But when I have an air pocket, it's gonna mess up my throwing. So I actually wanna pop that if I can find it now. So I'm just taking my needle tool and I'm 
poking a hole. And compressing the clay. All right, so I think I got rid of my air pocket. I'm gonna keep going. So remember, focus on the walls and the height will come. All right, so there's, there are several things about this cup that I want to fix. I have thrown the walls, so it is actually thin enough. So what I'm gonna do next is kind of clean up the pot. So I'm gonna take my wood rib, and I'm gonna use that to scrape off some of that excess clay. Just put that in your bucket. Anytime a piece of clay comes off of your pottery, just put it in your slop bucket over there. You're just making slurry. All right, and then this wall is not perfectly smooth. So I'm gonna actually take my hand, put it on the inside very slowly, and hold this wooden rib on the outside and kind of press a little bit, smooth that wall some. All right, and then I'm running into the issue of this top really getting in the way. So let's go ahead and cut that. So what I'm gonna do is keep my foot on the pedal for this part. And I'm gonna hold the needle tool in both hands and I'm actually resting my wrists on the plastic splash guard. And then I'm actually leaning back for the first time so that I can actually see my pottery. And then I want to find the low part and I'm going to go in kind of sideways and let the needle tool cut into the piece and just slowly work my way in and once I've got it all the way in there I can just come up and the piece of clay is going to come off the top. So now I've got a nice even top of my cup again. Now if I do that too soon and then I throw a little bit more it's going to make it uneven again because I'm moving clay. So I want to make sure that I even the lip as close to the end of my process as possible. All right, now I'm just gonna clean some things up with my sponge. So I'm actually gonna get rid of the extra moisture in my sponge, fold it, and then take my hand and stick it inside my plate and press, or sorry, inside my cup and press down. And I'm keeping my foot on the pedal so I can turn it on very slow and controlled and then turn it off when I'm done. Take my sponge out. So that's a very important step. So if your bottom is kind of you know uneven or you see fingerprints in it, don't worry, you need to compress it at the end anyways. And I never wanna leave any water inside my cup. A lot of times it drips off your hand to the inside of the cup, um, which is totally fine while you're throwing. But if you leave water sitting in there, um, that is actually going to mess up your cup because as it dries and the clay shrinks, um, that water is going to cause the inside of the cup to weaken and then you'll get an S crack in the middle. And a cup with an S crack is not one that you can drink out of and it's not one that you can sell. So it's kind of a waste um, if you skip that one step. All right, now mine is a little weird on the outside still, and I don't like that. So I'm gonna take my sponge and actually throw one more time with my sponge against my fingers. And that's going to smooth the outside edge. If I wanna shape my cup, I can do that now. I just lost my sponge. Um, so if I want to press the clay out, I'm going to stick my fingers where I want the clay to go out and I'm just going to press slowly and the clay will swell out. Can you all see that on camera? It's swelling out just a little bit. Um, if I want the clay to go in, a lot of times like for like a vase or something, you want a nice little skinny neck. So you put your hands around it almost in a choking kind of motion and that's called collaring. So it went in some, and if I want to lay the lip down a little bit, I can just kind of support it with one finger, 
press with the other finger. Use very light pressure at the end because your clay is thinner. And I should probably slow down my wheel a little bit. And I have now gotten a nice little shape. I'll get my sponge back. Okay, now the last thing I want to do is make sure that I have a nice lip. So think about the lip. That is where your customers are going to be putting their lip or your grandma or whoever's getting this. So you want to make sure that you really take the time to smooth that lip at the end. Um, so I'm going to take my sponge and compress the lip again, making sure that there's nothing that is sharp. And I'm using my fingertips as well as my sponge. Get a nice round, smooth lip. Now, if you have a little mistake somewhere, your clay is super wet right now. So I'm working with the wheel as much as possible to save myself time and effort later. But there comes a point where little things, I probably just need to leave them because tomorrow, if I leave this kind of wrapped in a Walmart bag, this clay will be much easier to work with because it will not be as wet. And tomorrow will also be when I add a handle to this. All right, so I'm gonna stop here. And the last thing, and I forgot to grab one of these because they am right by the uh, supply buckets, is I'm going to use my wire cutter to actually cut my piece off of the wheel. And one more thing I did not mention earlier is I can use this tool to scrape off excess clay. So like that little tiny bit at the bottom, I'm just holding this with two hands but I don't really have enough excess clay there to scrape. I can also add a little shadow under the cup. So especially since I'm not gonna trim this, I'm just holding a little bit of the wooden tool that is shaped at an angle under the cup and see all that clay it scraped off. And that's just creating a nice little shadow under my cup so that it gives the illusion of not sitting completely on the table. Um, and if you were a little bit more experienced, you would probably trim a foot into the cup the next day. Um, but that is something you will get to do in college. All right. So I'm going to take my wire tool and right now it is so long, it's way longer than the space that I have here. So I'm actually going to wrap it around my hands, make sure it's about the length of my cup and then make sure that you are being careful. I've done this a lot, so I'm a little, you know, wild with a wire cutter, but um, you need to be slow and methodical because the worst thing um, is when you have spent all this time making a cup and you're being careless and you slice off part of the lid or the lip on accident. So I'm gonna take my wire cutter and very intentionally go over my cup, start on the outside, press down on the metal with my thumbs, and then slide in one continuous mo motion all the way back. And even if it gets a little bit difficult, you still wanna continue in that single motion. And then I can wipe any excess clay off the wire tool, put that clay in my bucket, and then get this away in your bucket's fine. Um, you know, you don't want it to be hanging out and it like unspool on you and then cut something. All right, now I'm going to take my wear board and put it as close as possible. And then I'm going to take my pot lips and I'm going to put them where the two sides are going to meet on the wheel, see, under my cup. And then I'm going to press down on the metal, just like I did before, slide in very slowly and intentionally, and then pick up at an angle and you'll feel the seal kind of break. Now you can pick up your cup and just set it on your wear board and then slide these out. Almost like trying to slide a tablecloth out from underneath dishes. And if it's stuck like this one is, just keep working with it till it comes off. And you now have a really nice cup that you have thrown. Congratulations.
before you are done for the day, you need to make sure that you clean up your area. So I'm actually gonna take this wooden rib and I'm gonna scrape off that clay that was left over, put that in my bucket, take my sponge and try to get it as clean as possible. And I realize your water is no longer perfectly clean and just start at the center of your wheel and slowly go out while it's spinning. You don't need it to be spinning fast or it's gonna be sloshing water everywhere. And then I have a nice clean wheel head. And then I'm going to take my sponge and I'm going to get all of this slurry and pieces of clay and water out of the splash guard. It's really nice that we have a splash guard so it's in there instead of all over the wall and all over the classroom and all over you. And then I tend to always get a little bit of clay on my legs um, just because, you know, it's getting everywhere and it's all wet. Um, and so if you get clay on your clothes, it is not a big deal. It will just wash out in the washing machine if you're trying to go somewhere and you don't want to have to change first. Um, then you can actually just take a wet washcloth and you can scrub that clay off before you go anywhere. All right, so after I've gotten all this, I'm going to put all my tools in there. I'm going to put this rack back because I didn't use it, but if you need to use it to wipe your hands, you can. I'm going to turn off the electric wheel and then I'm going to take my cup and I'm going to wrap it in.